A week before we're set to go out on our shakedown cruise, I'm sitting in the galley making dinner, turn the microwave on, and the power, AC power breaks out. So I thought it was the uh, shore power, so I checked the control panel and everything was fine. Uh, the inverter clicked back on, popped the breakers back and forth, the shore power came back on, went back, hit the microwave again, same thing happened again. Then I started noticing that very slight, distinctive smell of an electrical burn. So I opened up the uh, engine room, uh, started checking the uh, lines coming in from the shore power, and lo and behold, this is what I saw on the AC side of my inverter charger. So I ordered a new one, and what I wanted to go over with you today was a subtle installation change that I made on the new inverter charger as opposed to the old one where I just put the wires twisted up and tightened them down inside the terminal block. After doing a little research, I determined the best process would be to use ferrules and some dialectic grease. I did not have ferrules the proper size for the wires that I was using since I was using pretty good size gauge wire. So I came up with a solution to that and this is what I wanted to show you today. So what I used was a butt connector that I modified, which you see here, cut the insulation off of one end. Now with the insulation off, drill a hole all the way through that the wire has access completely through the center of the ferrule. The next step, get a pair of ferrule crimples and, and crimp that down good and tight so that you have a solid connection. Here you can see the, the crimped connection almost ready to go. The next step, since I used a good quality heat shrink butt connector to start out with, was to seal that end and we're ready to install. Here's the finished product with all the connections made. They all have ferrules and they all have dialectic grease and they all have a good tight connection. So this should, should prevent uh, any loose wires like we had on the last install and any possible stray wires making any connections to cause a short. Here you can see the old terminal block all burnt up. As I went to take it out, it broke apart, uh, which really wasn't any problem. Just connected the old existing wires uh, from the inside. Here on the inside, you can see what the inverter looks like. And what I simply did was replace each wire uh, inside of the inverter that was burnt up and put it back together. So here we have the, the new terminal block all installed. And after that, we have the cover placed on and then the unit up on the bench. I did do a best bench test with 12 volts in, didn't get any errors, and I got 120 volts out the AC side, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this in the aft cabin for the secondary uh, shore power. Well, that's it for this week, it's a wrap. Thanks for stopping by. As always, we like to ask you to hit that subscription button, give us a big thumbs up, and like us on Facebook. Until next time, peace and fair winds.